Hi everybody, it's uh, John back with another model inbox review. We're looking at an interesting aircraft uh, subject today and one that hasn't been covered by that many companies um, in any scales. So it's quite interesting to announce that I'm going to be doing an inbox review on a Mitsubishi T2. And the kit that I'm actually doing a review on is the Hasegawa 72nd scale Mitsubishi T2. But before we go into the um, into the inbox review and the boxing history and everything else, I just wanted to show you that because Hasegawa do a number of different boxings of this particular kit, I wanted to show you why they do different boxings. Because um, there are actually four different models of the Mitsubishi twin-engined aircraft that they actually box. And they're all different in many respects. The first one is the T2 and the T2 Kai. The basic differences between the T2 and the T2 Kai is the T2 has a full twin cockpit with a two seat with a back seater in the back there. The T2 Kai, I'm pretty sure, is a specialised trainer and weapons trainer, and it was built for doing um, you know, they blacken out all the cockpit and they just fly on dial on, on instruments. It's an instrument trainer and also it's a weapons trainer. The T2 Kai was a specialised training aircraft and it's fully supersonic. Um, built along the same lines as the Jaguar. As you can see, the Jaguar fe features a lot of the Jaguar lines in this particular aircraft. But believe it or not, the aircraft uh, wasn't actually built on, on, on the philosophy of the Jaguar or the way the Jaguar was utilised. And I'll talk about that later in, in the review. But the T2 and T2 Kai is actually built in the boxing of the kit that I've actually got. You can build either or. So you can build a two-seater trainer or you can build the, the two-seater with the blackened out rear cockpit trainer. And it's it's quite an interesting um, option. And it, I find the aircraft is really colourful. For those guys who like colourful kits, yeah, the, the, the Hasegawa T2 Mitsubishi Fighter is actually... Well, it's a it's a weapons trainer basically. is actually a very colourful and very attractive aeroplane. I like the lines of it very much. The second kit that Hasegawa box, whoops, sorry about that, is this one. This is the um, the mount of the Japanese Air Self Defence Aerobatic Team, the Blue Impulse uh, team. I think they're a five ship aircraft team, and they have their aircraft in these very very attractive colours and Hasegawa do a full decal scheme in a separate boxing for the Blue Impulse team Mitsubishi T2 and they actually use a standard T2 uh, trainer there you can see all the back seaters they're all um, they're all not blacked out they're, they're perfectly normal you know the third kit that Hasegawa box is this thing this is the Mitsubishi T2 CCV, and it was a development and experimental um, concept fighter to produce a supersonic air defense fighter for the Japanese Air Self-Defense Force, utilizing an existing airframe. Um, <clears throat> and I think it was it was quite a successful trial for the T2 in many ways, but of course the contract went out eventually to the F-15 Eagle and the Japanese fly the F-15 Eagle in the air superiority role. But it is a very striking and attractive looking aircraft with lots of angular fins all over the shop. Um, and its red and white scheme with the black uh, cockpit canopy line there is, is a really attractive colour scheme. And Hasegawa do a boxing of this as well. And we'll get into that too. But there is a fourth model at Hasegawa uh, box and that's the single seat F-1. Now, I haven't actually done any options and costs on the F-1 because it's a separate aircraft. Aesthetically, it's a different aeroplane. So, um, But there are a number of boxings where you can build the F-1 and the T-2 from the same box. So when that crops up, it's obviously in the options and costs here and there. But basically, the F-1 is a camouflaged variant of the T-2 with the back cockpit completely fared over and full of avionics. And it's just a single-seat ground-attack strike aircraft in much the same way the Jaguar always was. And I always found that the aircraft, to me, it's a Japanese Jaguar. Um, but uh, I'll go into that, how the Japanese followed the doctrine of a completely different aircraft. Right, 
the model itself. The Hasegawa kit originally was released in 1978. Um, it had a different serial number. I think it was E14, I think, when it was originally released. And the boxing didn't change in any way, shape or form. Um, it just received a different... Um, it received a different serial number and additional parts to build the T2 Kai when it was released in the 1980 release, which you'll see in a minute, and it's a 1980 release that I've actually got. So the only major difference, really, is the fact that this kit only features the T2 inside the box. When it was released in 1980, in this guise, it had alternative parts inside the box to produce the T2 Kai as well. And I'll show you the parts that go in, into the kit because they're actually quite interesting. The way you build the T2 Kai is quite interesting indeed. So that's 1980. Then in 1982, uh, Hasegawa released the Blue Impulse version of the T2. And this was the first boxing of the Blue Impulse kit. Um, and it's I'll be honest with you, it's the same model that you got in the original 78 release four years prior. But with a different decal set and colour scheme to apply to the kit. And in my opinion... The, uh, the Blue Impulse um, Aerobatic Team's colour scheme is really, really attractive and probably one of the more attractive colour schemes available to um, display team aircraft. Um, anyone who, who uh, collects display team aircraft for a collection, they really should have, if you haven't already got a Blue Impulse T2 in your collection, you should try and get hold of one. It's a delightful kit to build and it's very attractive. Um, but that's, yeah, as I said, that's the Blue Impulse T2 1982 edition, edition release. And then in 1983, they released the Mitsubishi T2 CCV. And this was the um, the experimental air defence fighter variant of the T2 that they produced. It's basically a T2 Kai. You can see the back of the airframe, uh, the back of the cockpit there. It's all fared out. It's basically a T2 Kai. And... I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure whether that would have had a systems operator in the back seat or whether it was just fared out because it was a single seat aircraft. I'm guessing it was a single seat aircraft. But uh, as I said before, this particular kit would make an extremely colourful, very attractive um, addition to anyone's 72nd scale jet collection. And it's a striking and very unusual looking aircraft, the CCV variant of the T2. So that's 1983. We then go through to 1985. And again, Hasegawa released another version of the T2. This was just basically a reboxing of the original kit. I don't think it changed any of the parts. I don't think the decals even changed, you know, the, the aircraft. It was just reboxed in a more modern boxing when they, they started to go over to the more modern boxing getting away from the old hail style boxings where you had the border on the left hand side here and um this boxing yeah it's, it's probably quite nice like a bit better than the original i would have thought 1985 went through to 1985's t2 standard uh trainer release um again it's similar artwork to what you had on the original kit but they've done away with the old border which is quite interesting the other thing that's interesting is in the original artwork Below this T2, you had another T2 flying below the nose section of this one. And in this artwork, you've got a Phantom jet. It's an F4J there. You can see that peeling off, which is, I think that's quite interesting too. So that's 1985. 1985 went through to 1987 and another re-release of the Blue and Pulse T2. Um, it has a little bit of information here in the top left-hand corner, um, giving you a little bit of information about the aircraft itself. And this has been changed to Blue Impulse T2 in a different colourway. But the, the boxing is pretty much much and much the same as it was two years prior. 1987 went through to 1989. And again, Hasegawa released another Blue Impulse reboxing. This time it's very similar to the original 1987 release boxing. Um, but I've got a feeling that uh, they incorporated the different numbers for the Blue Impulse team with the serial numbers and the designation numbers in this particular boxing. I don't think it was exactly the same as the original kit. Um, so, they, yeah, that was 1989. Then you went through to 1992, and yes, they re-released this kit again in a new box. Um, again, the, the Blue Impulse T2 changed down into the bottom left-hand corner in yellow writing, um, but it was the same kit that you got two years prior, three years prior, you know, 
1992 and obviously um Hasegawa being a Japanese com company they obviously knew that they would sell more Japanese aircraft in their home country than what they would Western aircraft or Russian aircraft and the T2 proved to be a very very sellable model kit because it's a bit like being English and buying a Red Arrow isn't it very similar to that but to getting hold of a Red Arrow's Hawk um, 1992 went through to 19 uh, sorry a late, another edition of 1992s this was the T2 again in the similar type box the revised boxing that you had there same artwork as before but the T2, Mitsubishi T2 here is written in a different colour in the bottom left hand side here and um, yeah it's just a revised box and then in 1992 you went through to 1995 and Hasegawa started to release special colour scheme editions of the T2 um, there were a large number of different kits uh, released with different colour schemes and um, yeah, the T2 was a, a primary target for this for Hasegawa because they obviously wanted to cash in on different colour schemes that people wanted for their different kits and uh, this one featured Aeromaster decals um, and it's the 40th anniversary of the Japanese Air Self-Defence Force their uh, colour scheme markings uh, which is quite nice. It's not bad, is it? And then in 1995, you went through to another re-release of the Blue Impulse Jet in 1999. Um, again, they changed the format of the box, going back, uh, going over to a, a white border on the corner here. 72nd scale written in a red flash, um, and the Blue Impulse T2 in black. Um, yeah, it's just it was just a revised boxing. Um, so everything exactly the same as before 1999 you had another release in 1999 this is of the T2 again with the same style box the revised white border with the red flash with that 70 second scale kit written inside it but it was just a T2 model so that's 1999 you went through to a very late edition of 1999 and this one was the 22nd squadron 20th anniversary this was the 20th anniversary of this particular squadron in the Japanese Air Self Defence Force, and they came up with a new colour scheme for the T2 to advertise the fact that this this squadron was 20 years old, and I think it probably toured the uh, the air show circuits in Japan, um, and it's not such a striking colour scheme as I think are some of the ones that you're going to see soon, but uh, it, it's different, isn't it? It's a different a, a different set of markings to put on the T2. So 1999 goes into the year 2000 and 2000 saw another re-release of the T2 CCV exactly the same kit as he got before but with a new style box and Hasegawa started to put the name of the aircraft kit on the bottom of the middle of the box there um, and they did this with a lot of their uh, re-release re boxing right the way through to sort of modern days and Hasegawa Hobby Kits was written in the in the bottom left hand corner so that's the 2000 release. We then went to 2001, and this is a much more striking colour scheme release. Again, this is a 22nd Squadron Special Painting Edition, and this was uh, another aircraft which went onto the air show circuit and also went to, I think it went to a Far Eastern meet, a bit like Tiger Meet in the West. Um, and the aircraft was extremely colourful, very vibrant, and Hasegawa obviously keen to cash in in 2001 they did a decal scheme for the T2 to commemorate this as well. 2001 went to 2002 and the T2 actually started to become being used as an aggressor aircraft in the aggressor um, program that the Japanese Air Self-Defense Force ran. A bit similar to, well, Top Gun and, you know, Red Flag and all that type of stuff. And they painted the aircraft up in a camo pattern that you would associate with an adversary um, they even put Russian style markings on the fin and the forward nose, just like the aggressor squadrons in America. And again, in 2002, Hasegawa produced a set of markings for a T2 to commemorate this as well. 2002 went through to 2004 and Hasegawa did something a bit unusual in 2004 because what you're actually looking at is the X-T2. The X-T2 was actually the prototype of the T2 uh, Mitsubishi aircraft and Hasegawa released a set of decals so that you could build the um, the prototype of the T2 aircraft. There were a number of X-T2s that were converted and um, 
upgraded into T2 standard production aircraft. Um, and I think this particular aircraft is in a museum somewhere in Japan. So that's 2004. And then you go through to another special um, commemorative set of markings from Hasegawa. This is to commemorate the Matsushima Special 2003 Edition T2. And this aircraft was another plane that went on the air show circuits to co to commemorate some form of, um, I don't know, maybe it was a, a type of pilot or a type of um, squadron that was being devised. But it was a special edition. And again, the air, I can't fault them. It's a really nice looking aircraft, a very nice striking um, colour scheme there. And any of these models of the special edition T2s, I think, would make a nice addition to your collection if you like colourful aircraft. I know there's a couple of subbers that like to build very colourful aircraft. Um, one of them is an IPMS uh, member down in the in the West Country, uh, and I follow his channel quite a lot because the, st the stuff he builds is absolutely phenomenal. But he likes his day glow silver and <laughs> very vibrant coloured kits that you know he likes them, and he does very nice jobs of them. Um, if you want to uh, click onto his channel and find out a bit more about him, the guy's name is Tim Headworth, and he has a channel um, which is, I think it's it's uh, UK Scale and Modelling or something. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I'll try and find out and put a link on the bottom for for you. But I'll have to contact Tim first and make sure that I can do that. Anyway, that's 2004 special release. Uh, of the Matsushima Special 2003 marking set for the T2. And then in 2005, you had another special anniversary kit, this time in similar colours to the Matsushima Special kit, but this was a two-style type of boxing that you got from the Hasegawa to build either the F1 or the T2 Japanese Air Self-Defence for 50th anniversary um, marking set. And I think they actually had one of each style of aircraft. You can see the F1 here with its single-seater uh, cockpit, but usually this aircraft would have been quite extensively camouflaged um, in much the same way that 70s RAF ground attack fighters would have been camouflaged. But this one was a special edition with a T2, and you can build either or from that model as well, from 2005 release. And then in 2008, yep, yeah, you guessed it, another re-release of the Blue Impulse T2. Uh, exactly the same kit as you had before, but obviously they, they needed to reissue and rehash the sales of this kit. So they they they, they didn't revamp it, they just reboxed it. Um, but to me, it's a similar box to what you had before, but that was 2008, Blue Impulse release. And then in 2008, you also had another re-release of the standard T2 Mitsubishi aircraft. Um, this one is actually in adversary colours. Although it's not an adversary camouflage, it's quite interesting. It's an adversary um, aircraft, which, yeah, it's quite good, isn't it? I quite like the look of that. Anyway, 2008 goes through to 2014, and this is the last release of the T2 that I know of. And this is the T2 CCV, Air Defence Tactical Weapons System. Um, and you can see there now that the back seater is actually... Um, accommodated by a second member um, so obviously that back seater is definitely a WSO um, a beautiful camouflage a beautiful uh, livery on this aircraft I actually fancy building this myself I think it would look very nice anyway 2014 we'll just leave you with a nice image of a T2 there this is a standard T2 trainer um, in service with the Japanese Air Self-Defense Force I just wanted to leave you that image before we pan down to the kit itself so what we'll do we'll just um, I'll just bring the camera down so that you can have a look at this really very nice kit. Very, very nice kit. I do remember years and years ago when I was probably about 17, I did build a Blue Impulse version of this particular kit. I didn't build the T2, but I did build the Blue Impulse kit. And yeah, I was never very good at decals when I was a teenager. <laughs> Let's just leave it there, shall we? Before I open the box, actually, you've got the T2 Kai on the side here. And I'll explain a little bit about the T2 Kai and the T2 Standard in the in the conclusions. And then you've got some adverts for some other aircraft here. There's an F, uh, sorry, a T33, shoot, Silver Star. You've got uh, a T34 Mentor and an F4J um, Phantom. And that's the, T, the, the F1 variant that you can get boxed. You can see it's it's a T2, but it's a single-seater, and that's the camo pattern. 
that the aircraft's usually released in. That's quite interesting. Just open the box. That section of the box up there, and we'll have a look at everything in the usual manner. I'll just um, take a couple of these out. The parts in this kit are absolutely beautiful. Um, I have to take my hat off to Hasegawa. Hasegawa were one of the leading manufacturers of plastic model kits, certainly right through the 70s and 80s. They were one of the companies that I would almost certainly say were a benchmark company in much the same way that Tamiya is now. Um, and yeah, they, they were they were an extremely good company to have a kit built, you know, to build a kit from. Anyway, the instructions. The instructions here, typical Hasegawa, you've got a picture of a made-up aircraft on the top, um, quite easy, and then you've got um, some stats and a bit of history on the aircraft. And then you've got your colour scheme on this page. Um, which gives you the two different aircraft that you can build, which is really interesting. I like the look of this kit. This aircraft is really nice. You can see the Jaguar lines in the aircraft. It does look very much like a T2. In actual fact, um, you could be, you could mistake that for a T for a Jaguar T2 very easily. And it's interesting that the T2 version of the Jaguar <laughs> has the same designation as this aircraft, isn't it? Anyway. The instructions. The kit builds up in six steps. There are quite a few sub-assemblies hanging around here and there, and there are some painting suggestions on the right-hand side of the assembly sheet there, which is quite nice, and, you know, it's, it's a very easy-to-follow instruction leaflet. And basically, in step one, you're building the interior. Um, as a 70s release, original release, it's not going to be terribly detailed, but for the time, it wasn't bad. You know, I don't think this kit actually uh, was that badly detailed for a 1978 release. You've even got decals there for the side panels. And I think you've got decals for the instrument panels as well. But I'll have to check that later. But you usually do have a decal for both the instrument panels and if you've got ones for the side panels there, which is nice. In the section two, you put the airframe together, sorry, the fuselage halves together. Um, I'll talk about the splitter plates in a minute when I get to the parts because the splitter plates and air intakes have their own issues. Uh, the pro builders find that that's the only fault with this particular kit and it's not a fault with accuracy. It's the fact that they have to use filler. Um, yeah, you can't please the pro builders, can you? Then you, in section three, you put the airframe together. The wing is actually, I think the wing is a one-piece wing, which is really easy and handy, isn't it? And one-piece stabilators at the back there. All moving tail surfaces and then you've got that complicated arrangement for the canopy part d9 there that is the part that you put into place if you're building the t2 kai and i'm pretty sure the t2 kai is a dedicated ground attack weapons trainer and instrument trainer as opposed to just a standard um, transition trainer which the t2 standard is then in section four and five, you basically put in the nose of main undercarriage assemblies together. Um, there's, there is something that's worthy of note with the T2. This large door, which goes over the, um, the wheel well, both sides underneath the aircraft there, that is in the closed position. Um, whether the aircraft is flying or on the ground, it only opens up to allow the wheels and the wheel assembly to, to um, fold forward into that wheel well bay, and then it closes... It closes up much the same way as a T2 Jaguar. And then in section six, you've got the armament fit there, and there's quite a few um, ammo layouts there. And again, they tell you in the instructions there, it says install the fuel tank on all the missiles if you want to make the T2 Kai. They're actually telling you to install the missiles and the fuel tanks. Sorry, they're in, you, can, you can use the missiles, but... <laughs> Sorry, this is confusing. You can use the missiles, uh, sidewinders, and some form of air-to-ground uh, air missile there. Or you can fit the drop tanks onto the T2 Kai, but you can only fit missiles if you're building a T2 Kai. The T2 standard aircraft doesn't have um, a fire control system, and it's not used for ground-attack weapons training, which is interesting. 
Um, it doesn't tell you what type of... Oh, yes, it does, actually. It's an XA Sim Mark I missile. Um, yeah, not a lot to go on there. And you've even got a little colour guide for the pilot there. Yes, Bill, there's two pilots in this kit. I'm sure you'll like that. <laughs> anyway, that's the instructions. The instructions are very easy to follow. They're, they're simple and easy to follow. The decals... Now, 1970s and 80s Hasegawa decals were they were reasonable by even by today's standards they were reasonable but they were pretty good by 1970s 80s standards certainly as good as anything airfix produced or tamiya produced at, at the time and these decals the register on them is absolutely superb they have yellowed slightly and i might have to put them in the window as a trick to try and bleach some of that yellow staining out of the backing film but there you go, you've got your instrument panel decals as well, and they look pretty good. I have actually seen pictures of the interior of the T2, and they look pretty good. They're light grey with black dials, very, very interesting. So that's the quality of the decals are very good, I'm quite pleased with that. Now then, transparencies. The transparencies, I'm going to try and show you these transparencies as best I can, because they're actually quite nice. And there's a couple of transparencies on sprue here somewhere. Let's have a look. There we go. You've got two separate transparencies. Now, one of them is obviously for the F1. That's for the F1. And you've got a, a, a canopy for the F1 there, which is that one there, the smaller one of the two. And they're very clear, crystal clear, in fact. They're nicely crafted. There's no flash on them whatsoever. Very, very nice indeed. So, as ex as you'd expect from Hasegawa, good parts. This is a separate sprue, which comes with a T2 kit. You don't get this in the F1 model, but you do get it in the T2 kit. It has a separate instrument panel at the back there, which you can paint up and then put that decal on in place, and that's nice. You've got a little splitter section here. It's a bit like a phantom canopy, isn't it? It's, it's, um, it's split. And then you've got the rear canopy hood here. And that's really nice as well. You can see that the clarity on them is absolutely fantastic. And that will look extremely nice on the kit when it's finished. I don't doubt that at all. Now then, there's an interesting couple of features here. This was the difference between the original first generation release kit from 1978 and the 1980s and consequent releases of the T2 after that date is that you've got this sprue in the kit. This is the, the sprue that changes your T2 into a T2 Kai. You've got a separate pilot here, which is quite nice. And that's this is the, uh, the shroud that goes over the separate pilot, the second pilot seat section. And that is actually on the real aircraft. Now, I've seen some of these. Some of them are black and some of them are light grey. And some of them are actually the same colour as the camo pattern, depending on the aircraft that you're actually flying. But the majority of them are light grey, the same colour as the interior. Um, and that's why I think this kit is actually very interesting, because you could theoretically build five different models from the Hasegawa releases including the F1. The pilots aren't bad either. As Hasegawa pilots, I always have, have issues with Hasegawa crewmen, especially in the armour kits. They were never brilliant, but he isn't too bad, is he? You know, you paint him up, I think he'll look all right. So that's the black sprue. Then you've got the first of the grey sprues, and here's the one-piece wing we were talking about, and that is, well, that's really nice. Yeah, it's raised panel lines. What do you expect? It's 1978 re release, but uh, they're not overdone. And they're quite clean and the parts are really nice. We've even got some uh, raised panel lines on the pylons. You can see them there. It's really nicely crafted. The kit is really nicely done indeed. Second sprue. Detail on the wheels there. They're quite nice. There's a light grey pilot there. You might be able to see his, his features a little bit better. Yep. And the carriage legs, they're quite nicely detailed as well. There's a few struts and bits and bobs. 
and the aircraft actually has separate parts to produce the uh, ejection seats and they're nicely molded as well very very nice and then you've got your jet pipes at the back there they're quite nice as well got the sidewinders not much not much to write home about with the sidewinders and then i'm gonna i'm just going to show you one fuselage half because i don't need to show you both but I want to show you this fuselage half because it really does look like a T2 Jaguar, doesn't it? I've got a T2 Jag in my, in my um, stash and the only major difference is, is that the T2 Mitsubishi is actually a larger aircraft but it has very similar lines. The tail fin's slightly different and the wings are slightly different but the actual forward fuselage, God, you could take that straight off a Jaguar and just bolt it on, couldn't you? The uh, raised panel lines on the tail fin there, they're, they're very fine, they're, they're not overdone at all, they're quite nice. And here's another little feature which I think might be quite interesting to you. Can you see the arrestor hook at the back there? That's actually moulded into the fuselage half. I'm hoping it's going to, yeah it is, it's coming into view and that is really intricately cast, very nice. And the wheel wells, they're quite nicely cast as well. There's a little bit of detail going on in there that you could pick out. The nose wheel detail is actually on the underside of the um I don't know if I can show you that actually it's on the underside of the cockpit floor and that's that's the wheel well detail there so that will show through the fuselage halves and yeah it's quite nice the air intakes I wanted to talk to you about the air intakes the pro builders who build this kit and there are a number of reviews online they they actually state the Hasegawa kit is extremely nice the only fault they found with it is the air intakes because when you put the air intakes into place they do need a bit of filler but to be honest with you what kits you build nowadays don't need a bit of filler so there we go but it has got quite good praise from the pro builders and the reviewers they like this kit a lot anyway let's just read you through the information about the kit um, <clears throat> the model we're building is a Hasegawa Mitsubishi T2 stroke T2 Kai. The serial number is E16, it's moulded in 172nd scale, and its initial release date was 1978. There are decals for two versions. The first is a T2 of the 21st Group 4th Air Division, based at Matsushima Base, and the second is a T2 Kai, an experimental group Kag Kagamigahara Base. Um, yeah interesting <laughs> i hope i didn't mispronounce that and that's the second version that you can build from this particular kit the model dimensions are approximately 10 inches long by four and a half inches in span and it should sit two and a half inches high on its undercarriage now there are 52 parts on two light gray plastic sprues 12 parts on one dark gray plastic sprue and six parts on two clear plastic sprues producing 70 parts in total now the options and costs. The options in the main come in three different boxings, a T2, a Blue Impulse Jet and a T2 CCV. And you can also usually get an F1 kit from most of the marquees, but the prices here are only for two seat variants, the T2s, the Blue Impulse or the T2 CCVs. Now in 1700 scale, Pit Road do a West Wing set which comprises a Mitsubishi F1, a Japanese home-built version of the F16 called the F2, a Mitsubishi T2, uh, a T4 fight, uh, fighter trainer and a KC-767 uh, Boeing airliner which is converted into a tanker. Um, these kits are quite rare, they're not easy to get hold of but when they sell Bearing in mind the 1700 scale, so they're probably still a little bit on the dear side. They sell for between £10 and £15, and I have seen a couple on eBay over the last six months. In 1144 scale, F Toys do a T2. That retails for about £7 to £8. The reviewers like that kit, they say it's very nice. And Kami de Karakora build a T2. Uh, no pricing is available on that, and it's just a run of the mill kit. Micro Ace do a T2 based on the LS kit of the F1. It's a converted F1 kit with a two seat cockpit and the kit retails between 20 and 25 pound. The reviewers don't like that model at all. And Platts do a T2 which is based on the F Toys kit 
and that retails between £13 and £15, but it has much better decals than the original F-Toys kit, and the reviewers like that as, just as much as the F-Toys kit. Obviously, it's the same sprue. In 72nd scale, Hasegawa do a T2 and a T2 CCV and a Blue Impulse kit, and these models vary in price anything from 5 if you hold out for the price, to about £39, and I've seen them sell for nearly 40 quid. Platts also produce a T2 and a CCV. Uh, that's a standalone kit from Platts, and they retail for between £18 and £30, and the reviewers think that this kit is one of the best on the market in any scale. In 148th, Fujimi do an F1 under T2, and that retails for between £19 and £45. I think you can build either or from the same model. And Hasegawa do a 48 scale T2, and this actually is the best T2 model on the market. Anywhere you can buy, it's absolutely superb, and that retails for anything between £27 and £64. Right, conclusions. This plane reminds me so much of the Sapecat Jaguar. The T2 was even powered by the same power plant with two Rolls-Royce Turbomeca Adore turbofan engines. But apparently it was designed following the doctrine of the Northrop T38 Talon. But to me it's just a Japanese Jaguar. So anyways, let's talk about the kit. Kits of T2s are often offered in three different versions, not to be confused with the F1 variant, which is a dedicated ground attack derived from the T2. Yeah, the F1 was actually released and built and designed after the T2 was released. The XT2 and T2. Now, this is a prototype and production trainer variant of the two, air, two basically similar aircraft. And the Blue Impulse version, which is a mount of the Japanese Air Self-Defense Forces display team. And the T2CCV, which was an experimental fighter version of the T2. Um, now then, the kit does have good detail and it's nice workable plastic and very faint raised panel lines are all what you'd expect from Hasegawa. The decals look spot on too and the reviewers like this kit, especially the 48 scale T2. It's an absolute beauty. I've built a number of Hasegawa kits in the past and they usually fit together easy enough, but the surface detail is usually pretty lacklustre. However, this kit looks really nice. There are two separate versions of this kit with alternative parts for a T2 and a T2 Kai, which I believe is the weapons trainer version. So that's the inbox review finish for the Hasegawa T2. I hope this video has been of some use. Um, if you have any questions, queries, anything really, put, just pop it down in the comments box underneath the video and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Um, thanks for tuning in and I hope all your modelling projects are running really smooth. I'll see you for the next one. Bye bye.